part of my architecture is, is Florida. And my, my friend Alex George is a nationally known uh, architectural photographer. He says, Florida has the best light of any uh, place in the United States for photographs. I thought it was very interesting. I was the first architect to ever work with Paul Rudolph. As a result of that, every, uh, that became the Sarasota School, and Rudolph became very well known uh, all over the world. He, he won a lot of competitions and stuff, and so a lot of people came to Sarasota, A, to, to work under the influence of Rudolph or be near him, you know. We used to go, we used to meet at the uh, Plaza Restaurant every night for drinks. That was a sort of a watering hole every night. We'd go down there for, for uh, dinner and drinks and, and uh, conversation. We, we'd go all into the night talking. It, and we all, we all have something in common and we all keep in touch with each other. Paul Rudolph came in one night and I said, gentlemen, here is the architect of the century. And I said, you don't agree with that, but you will later on. And so I, I was proven right, you know, Rudolph became a tremendous influence. Of course, Rudolph had some pretty avant-garde concepts, which I absorbed uh, in the process. He used to call me up on the telephone. He never talked to anybody on the telephone except me. And we'd talk for hours on the phone. Paul was a funny guy. He and I became very close friends and stayed friends uh, for the rest of his life. And uh, he wanted me to come up and teach at uh, Yale. And I said, well, why do you want me to teach? I said, there's a lot of people that you can get to teach of. He said, well, I want, I want your southern accent. I want to load Yale up with southern accents. Winter Haven is a great town. It's a great place to think. <laughs> there's no, there's no distractions. The interesting thing is, my work in Winter Haven has been totally accepted. Uh, in fact, uh, once a year they have uh, Jean Lady Day, and they have a, a walking tour, and which is very flattering. I became very well known as a, a wood architect, designed things in wood, wood beams and stuff. And uh, then I discovered pre-stressed concrete and I started to really see what I could, could do with that. And that was uh, a very interesting change in my work. In fact, uh, I got into pre-stressed concrete because uh, a guy hired me to do a $3 million house out of pre-stressed concrete because that was his business. And I said, well, I don't want like that pre-stressed concrete. I said, it's really uh, junk material. And he says, well, if you're going to do my house, it's got to be out of pre-stressed concrete. And I tried to talk him out of it, but it was a $3 million house, so I didn't talk too much against it. So I got into it and found that I could do all kinds of things with it. So uh, I started using it quite a bit. I could span, uh, I made an 80 foot bridge, clear span with no supports. So that's a great material. You know, the SA fraternity house I did up in Gainesville was this sort of a landmark building and that was really accepted by the students. In fact, all my clients have been very interesting. I don't know where I made them that way or, or uh, they just were that way to start with. In fact, uh, my son Ingham always says that strong personalities have always been attracted to your architecture. I've been very loyal clients. I used to tell him, I said, you know, uh, you hired me to fly up to Charlotte and do all these little jobs. I said, I've got a 
good architect in, in Charlotte, a friend of mine, could do all this little stuff for you, and you could fly me up to do the bigger stuff. He says, I have my architect, thank you, and, which was great loyalty. I have an office in Hawaii with, a, with an engineer, and I do quite a, work, a bit of work out there. And I've, I've done work all over the country. Uh, I've just got one one guy that's been with me for uh, 17 years, and uh, he even I've even taught him to think like me. And so uh, uh, I remember one time. Uh, He was building a model, and I was designing it while he was building it. And I said, stop. I said, I've made some changes. He says, I knew you were going to make those changes. I've already done them. So he, he's that close to me. And I, I enjoy teaching. When I went up to Gainesville one time to teach, uh, these kids were reading this book and they were outlining it and everything. And I said, I noticed everybody's reading this book. I said, there's only three things you learn out of this book and the rest of it's junk. And I took the book and I, and I said, I don't want anybody reading this book while I'm here. And I took it and I threw it back and it hit the wall and bounced in the wastebasket. And I got a standing ovation. <laughs> Most architects do uh, buildings on, on a lot, and I do the whole lot and everything with the building. That's where the courtyard comes in. So I design for the whole lot instead of just the, just the building. As you can see in this, this house takes up the whole lot front and back. Uh, the Merrill Lynch building downtown has a courtyard front and back. And, uh, and most clients like that very much, you know. I've done a lot of buildings where the, the, the uh, client has his office and a walled in courtyard outside his office, and that's a very popular concept. I always try to manage to get as much fresh air into the house to keep the mold from developing. I like Frank Lloyd Wright, I like Mies van der Rohe, which is totally two different things. And I like Le Corbusier too. I was over at Florida Southern College when he was there, and this friend of mine and I were there. We, we came over to hear Frank Lloyd Wright's speech, and he came up to me and said, would you like to have a tour of the buildings? I said, yeah. He said, I'll give you the tour. So we went arm in arm under his cape and went around the buildings. And he became a, he became a good friend. I always liked the story of Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, uh, he was testifying in some law court case or something. And they said, what do you do, Mr. Wright? He says, I am America's greatest architect. Some people say I'm the greatest architect who have ever lived, but I guess it's just a matter of opinion. And uh, his friend says, right, that was really ostentatious. Why did you do that? He says, I was under oath. <laughs> I think the way he uses his sight and buildings together has influenced me that. In fact, that falling water house that he did, that's the greatest building of all time, I think. He's influenced me by uh, his simplicity. He does everything so elegant and so simple, and that's influenced me quite a bit. He's just detailed so precisely and elegant, all the details. As Mies von Rue used to say, God is in the details, and he really 
put God in the details. Just in basic form, he's done some real nice uh, design concepts. I really liked him, and of course, he was one in the forefront of doing uh, modern skyscraper hotels. He did the Shelburne Hotel in Miami, which I thought was a real masterpiece. It was just so so elegant. I think, he, I think he was the first architect to start doing hotels down there. It's just so elegant. Paul Rudolph said that was the only house that he was jealous of, was that Birdcage house. He said, I wish I had done that. She was a real tra trailblazer in architecture, you know. She did stuff for the University of Miami and all. Well, I, I was one of the first architects to start doing interiors. And I did interiors because so many interior design people were screwing up my buildings. So I had to sort of take over. And I did. And I sort of uh, semi-educated uh, Rosemary Gillett in Winter Park. She does interiors. She used to do a lot of my interiors. And I used to, before we did any building, I used to say, now Rosemary, repeat after me. The interiors are subordinate to the architecture. Interior design and, and architecture should be the same thing. Uh, as you can see in this house, uh, it's hard to separate any one thing. It all goes together. So, uh, in here is our architecture. I love New York. It's a very dynamic place. I used to tell my architectural students, I said, you have uh, joined the greatest profession in the world. I said, where else could you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of somebody else's money for your own pleasure? My buildings are like children. I uh, keep track of them. Uh, I go see them all the time. And uh, when a client, when a person does something to the building, I get really upset. I, mean, I usually call it and raise hell with him, you know. Uh, Winter Haven uh, has a park downtown, and uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce people own part of that property, and they were going to build a building, and everybody was very upset about it, and the Chamber of Commerce said they were going to build that building regardless. So I proposed that we pick the building up and let the park go under it. And that was a very outstanding solution because that made everybody happy. There was one guy that moved into one of my houses and he painted the walls pink. He was a great guy, but I never could speak to him after that, you know. My favorite building is the one I'm working on at the time. <laughs> 